Hi, um, yeah, my name is Jonathan Soden. I'm the founder of the Soden Collection, um, contemporary art gallery in, um, in Shrewsbury. Um, and tonight we have the third instalment of the live art talks um, that we've been doing through lockdown and that we'll, we'll, we will continue to do um, through the next few weeks. Um, this evening we shall be speaking with Rob Leckie who is a local artist from, from Shropshire. Um, what I'm just going to do now is just invite him into the chat. And while we're waiting for Rob, if I just switch you around and show you some of Rob's work. So here we have some of Rob Leckie's work. I'm just going to invite him back into the chat. So Rob um, is a Shropshire artist. He predominantly works in collage work. Um, and we'll chat a little bit more to him live when he comes in. So his works are extremely popular in the gallery. Um, this is a lovely harbour scene. The light on it is a little bit, a um, little bit dark here at the moment, but it's um, it's lovely fresh in the gallery. It's a nice London scene. This picture is sold now, but I thought it was a good picture to show everyone. Ah, here we go, Rob. How are you? Good evening. I am fine. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just a little bit of the technology there, but I've sorted out the buttons, and so I'm no here. No problem. No problem at all. On this. Oh. So, Rob, nice I to see you. you. Ring you. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I've just had one. Our uh, Jen says she can't get on, so I said to ring our Julia because I know that Julia's on. <laughs> <laughs> Modern technology. Absolutely. <laughs> So, Rob, um, yeah. you're based in Shropshire. Um, do you Shropshire, does Shropshire inspire your work? Yeah, it always has done. I think we live in a, a, a really nice part of the world. Uh, we can say that as Shropshire residents. Um, I, I'm not a great landscape painter, I must be honest, as far as that. When it goes for hills and fields and that sort of thing, I do like uh, to have buildings on them. Uh, but I have painted a number of uh, uh, Shropshire's uh, landscapes, uh, particularly if they have a nice farmhouse on them that can be in the centre. But of course, it's, it's so great because we can jump up into North Wales, Central Wales. Um, and so, as you've seen on my paintings and that, that forms a large part of my work as well. I mean, you can get to uh, Barmouth in a couple of hours or Conway as well in a couple of hours. So uh, it's ideal for that. Yeah, brilliant. And Just for no, um, no, Jonathan, I, I love painting Shrewsbury as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a picturesque town, isn't it, Shrewsbury? Um, well, just to I let everyone know, the... um, if just to let everyone know, um, there is a comment box um, at the bottom um, next, well, a question box. Sorry. So if you want to ask um, Rob any questions during the chat, then pop them in there, and then we'll uh, we'll try and get through as uh, as many as possible. So, Rob, how long have you, um, have you been an artist? Well, I suppose most of my life, really. But, um, yeah, I've always loved painting as far as, as far as that's concerned. I even remember vaguely as an eight-year-old having a picture in, uh, doing a picture of a train that was displayed in the old Wellington Swimming Baths exhibition or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I've always, I've always painted. Um, uh, and um, it, it's actually since I retired though that um, I bought my first set of acrylic paints. I had to, when I left school, I had to, a load of uh, art, art vouchers and I thought I'm going to give um, uh, acrylics a try because I'd previously painted in watercolours. Um, and so it was then that sort of took off with the current styles. And way, way back when I was uh, at college training, uh, I did batik of all things, 
Now, Jonathan, you won't remember Batik so much, but in back in the 70s, it was very popular. Um, uh, Explain what that is then, Rob. Well, Batik is um, you apply a wax resist to material and then you dye the material. Ah. Uh, it, um, and um, it, it's a sort of a, a Far Eastern uh, art technique and then it sort of become very popular in the 70s. And uh, I particularly applied that to um, doing landscapes. Um, and, and, you know, you put it to uh, stretch some cotton on a frame, put some uh, um, wax on where you want to retain the white or whatever, and then gradually dye it, wax it, dye it, wax it, dye it. But that's a oh. long time ago now. So, uh, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, so I've always, I've always uh, dabbled in art. Yeah. So you say when, um, when you retired, so what was your career um, previously? Well, I, uh, I'm a retired head teacher. And uh, so I spent my uh, uh, career in school, primary schools. And uh, that in itself, I always look, uh, look on as very much a privilege because um, um, being in primary education, I was able to do massive amount of artwork uh, with youngsters, with children throughout the years. And um, at odd moments, I do sort of confess, even through all my years as a head teacher, uh, I was only known for ever, ever teaching one subject in school, and that was art. Um, but it, um, I think it, um, I think it made me quite popular with the children in the school because if the teacher ever said, "Mr. Lecky's coming along this afternoon to take the class," they knew exactly what was going to happen that afternoon. So uh, it, it had to, whatever. So, so, but it was great for me, of course, watching youngsters be creative and giving them the opportunity to. Uh, so yeah. That in itself has been fortunate. I've been able to indulge myself. So is that your, obviously, if that was your um, subject that people wouldn't, um, that the students knew you for, so is that your favourite subject to teach? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, very much uh, so. And when I was in the classroom, which is quite a few years ago, um, it, it was very much to the forefront. You know, you took youngsters on a trip somewhere, uh, you know, went to Ludlow Castle or somewhere like that. And then you'd spend a lot of time uh, doing work, artwork um, from the visits and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. And, and I said that was all the part of it, which uh, made it very enjoyable. Yeah, there is, um, I think we were discussing possibly beginning of last, last year now about the, um, the art programme in schools, which is diminishing. Um, would you, are you a big believer in keeping art on the curriculum um, in schools? Oh, very, very much so, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's diminished an awful lot from, uh, as I said, uh, when I was in the classroom, um, but it, I mean, it obviously still takes place. It's still a, a national curriculum subject, as far as uh, as far as that is concerned. Um, but but certainly, uh, it doesn't have uh, the quite as much to the forefront as what it what it did. But then, you know, obviously, all technology has changed and that sort of thing, and uh, loads of things that have changed on that sort of thing. But but I think it is very important. I mean, I've always fa always found that. Uh, uh, children love to be expressive. Um, you know, it's not just painting, it's building, making and all those sorts of things. Yeah, I think I'm, um, I'm a, a huge advocate for um, expanding the art curriculum uh, in, in schools. I mean, yeah. the reason for, for me um, having the gallery all stems from um, an art, art class in, in secondary school. Yeah. So, right had a huge impact on me the creativity and and the um life outside of the school which was just so um f f at that period of time was quite grim um it, it gave me um i don't know just a, a a different outlook on on life really and and that that stayed with me to kind of create the gallery well i think for for everybody as well you know that if um if you're doing art or being creative then it sees the purpose for being uh, to be able to write and be a mathematician and that sort of thing. And, um, you, you, you know, I mean, you still sort of think of creative people are still very much the way forward, you know, whether you're uh, 
designing a house, a, a car, or anything like that. You know, it's very much uh, uh, the creative side. But then also, uh, we still like um, to have uh, nice work on our walls, artwork on our walls that somebody has created, you know, and we, we can appreciate what they have done. Um, you know, and we all see it in different ways, don't we? As uh, these interviews have shown, you know, as far as that's concerned, whether you're a sculpture or an abstract artist, um, but but we still like to look at nice things and be reminded, which is which is lovely. Yeah. So not only are you um, uh, an ex headmaster artist, but you're also an author because you you've wrote, written a book, um, painting without brushes. Oh right, yeah. Which is your almost ethos on how you create your artwork. So explain to people that may not know what painting without brushes means, what it means to you. Oh, right. OK. Actually, Jonathan, I, I, might, I, I might not say I'm an author as such. That's, that might be a bit of, a, a bit of a, uh, an extension. There's my book. And if I flick it open, you'll see that I'm not so much as an art as, as a as an author because it, it's mainly made up of my paintings and then some uh, uh, comments and that of why I painted, painted that particular picture and um, uh, how it was painted and where I was and uh, thoughts and feelings and, as that. Um, so yeah, that, that's there. I think um, about, I'm a member of the Royal Birmingham Society of Artists and about four or five years ago, um, I had got a, a solo exhibition um, uh, in the gallery and part of that I was sort of thinking putting the work together uh, I want um, a bit of a zany title to go with this exhibition so I think well I don't really use paintbrushes there's hardly a paintbrush on my work so um, I'll, uh, I'll call it I'm painting without brushes and in reality, the pictures that uh, the paintings that you've just shown and the one behind your head at the moment, and the, the, I've got one over here as well. Um, I don't think, I don't think there's any brushwork on that painting at all. I mean, I don't, I, I do have brushes a little bit, uh, but I, um, I don't think there's any brushwork at all. So I apply paint in all different ways and... Uh, uh, I'll, I have brought, I have got a few of my tools here that I'll show you if you like. Yeah, go and show us Rob. Right, okay. Um, well, you mentioned that I do collage and uh, collage is a big part on it. The painting of your shoulder, the London one, uh, the sky particular, if you look closely at that, has got uh, tissue collage on it and all bits and pieces. Um, well, Rob, I'll just um, move the camera around so you can see. Yeah, there you are. I think you can see into there the um, the bits and pieces of collage there. That's tissue, all different colours of tissues onto it. Yeah. And that and that gives the background uh, to the painting, because uh, my paintings start at the back and gradually uh, work forward. So how do you how do you create lines? When I've got the initial bit, this is my next tool. Yeah. That, as you can see, is a roller. I'm sure probably people will recognise what sort of roller. It's a wallpaper seam roller. Uh, and I apply the paint. I roll a, uh, acrylic paint all over there. The water area, the sky area, um, I will have rolled it in. And what it does, it mixes the paint on the... Uh, uh, onto the painting. That one's actually on canvas, but I normally paint on um, uh, man board. So that's one of my essential tools uh, that I use. I've got one or two, I've bought a couple of my, my very latest works. So if you see that one, which is uh, a lot of my standard sort of thing, and I suppose the, 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 uh, the houses here I've put roller work onto them. Because uh, it creates a lovely texture as well. The paint only sticks at various uh, various places. So that's the first one. My next uh, tool is um, I've got here a box of wooden bits. These bits of wood 
as you can see, they're absolutely covered in paint. That's how I sort of print on the, the, the paint. And I've got, you see there's a box there with all different pieces in, and I've got about half a dozen different boxes and they're, they're all actually shaped. You can see that one's shaped into a nice sort of uh, thin shape, the other end. So that when I'm painting bricks, if I show you this one again, you can see the wall in the background there. That was mm. all painted with um, the end there of printing on. So I can do the big big areas with a nice brick set, and it gives the lovely textures into it as well. And you you've got those sort of uh, those sort of shapes and uh, very size. And probably I've got oh I don't know probably fifty pieces of wood in all different shapes and sizes that I've shaped myself. Um, uh, round ones as well, um, a little dowel there with a hole put into it, you know, to create the, the, the different shapes. So those are those. Thin lines, These, this is my next lot and these are my absolute favourite tools. You can see these, you can recognise them. They're bits of uh, store cards, old banker's cards. You can see they're absolutely covered in paint. And what I do, you can see I've chopped, chopped them down so I get different sizes. That one's a nice, very nice small one to do little bits and pieces. That one, so each of them, and I've probably got a dozen of those, but those those four there are more or less uh, my favorite ones. And if I show, you'll recognize this scene, Jonathan. Ah, very well. Yeah, very much so. So all those bits of the water there that you can see, uh, that's been put on with the thin bits of card. Uh, and it's it's very nice to get because obviously you get nice straight lines as far as as far as that's concerned, um, and it's brilliant for doing water. And then the windows on the buildings there you can see have all been put on with bits and pieces of um, of the pieces of wood, but the actual buildings as well and the bridge I've cut out. Um, they're they've cut out in bits of paper and cardboard. So you can see the spire on the church. Um, that I folded the paper in half and uh, it was uh, so it's done in symmetry and the, the trunks of the tree there I've cut out as well um, and then the branches I've done with the, the thin pieces of card and I just get pieces of card um, one of my favorites is his uh, Nespresso box the, the bridge was cut out of uh, Nespresso um, Brilliant. and uh, that, that piece of card there, you can see, that, that had a bridge shape on it. I think you sold that picture, Jonathan. So <laughs> uh, that was uh, the, a previous one uh, of, the, of the English bridge. And um, then other bits, I just have an old magazine and I cut out uh, bits and pieces from this magazine. And you see, nice magazine, lovely paper in it, nice and glossy. And if I open it up, you can see there's all bits and pieces cut out of the, cut out of the pages um and i think that's why people love your pictures so much is when when they when they see them you kind of first of all you kind of get that view like the one behind me is 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 it's a london scene yeah but then when you get that little bit closer you can then see all those cut out bits and it just makes it so interesting the fact that you can see in some of your work is Sudoku puzzles or yeah um, oh yeah yeah or, or newspaper cuttings or like you said parts of magazines that just had that almost like that brown tinge to it which suited the building that you were you were painting at the time yeah and it, it's so interesting to to look that little bit deeper into a picture which um which is I think why your your work is is so popular. How did well, you come up with that idea? Was it something that you'd seen previously, or uh, what? How, how did you come up with that style? Well, there's probably quite a few people now do collage, as you know, in work. But the original one for me, I think it was about 10, 12 years ago, an artist by the name of Mike Bernard, he published mm. a book. And uh, 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 he used all different sorts of tools and used collage into his work. And when I saw that, because I was starting to paint in acrylics at that sort of junction, when I saw his work, I thought, wow, this is my sort of work. 
Um, mm. And so I thought, yeah, okay, I can work in that sort of medium. Uh, and so that was the thing that sort of sparked me up. Uh, the other thing as well, and, and I only realised this probably a year or two ago when I was going to talk about my work, um, if you're in the primary classroom, uh, years ago when I, we used to do lovely, great big, uh, wall paintings with the children. Now, if anybody's taught children of, say, nine, ten years old, you know that you don't give them a big pot of paint and a big brush because you just get to all over the place. But if you've, you know, if you've been to a castle or something like that and you want to take a nice big painting of a castle, then if you get some sponges and you get some lumps of wood like I've got and some bit, bits and pieces like that, you can have a group of children working on it and it's so much more controllable. Um, mm. And so my classroom was also always full of uh, big collagey things like that. And I thought, well, crumbs, yeah, you know, you were doing this 25 years ago in the classroom, a little bit more sophisticated now, uh, <laughs> but uh, in essence, I suppose that's... Uh, another factor of uh, where I uh, where I got it from and yeah. actually I've just done this as well because uh, it makes it a lot easier for me but if you as I said my paintings start at the background and gradually come forward so very often like the one that I showed you with the boat on or the buildings there the boat went on last you know all the background was painted in and what I find is it's so easy to judge the size and scale of something that goes in. And when you cut it out, you can try it to see how it works within the whole composition. And mm. all, all objects, probably most artists know this, that if you start off with a rectangle, everything comes out of a rectangle. For instance, if I turn it round, you can see there's the hull of the boat, you know. Mm. And so that's how I, that's how I compile. Uh, uh, my boats. So that one there, as you can see, that was done exactly like that in two or three pieces. Um, there is the original photograph that I work from. That's Mevagissi. I took that in Mevagissi, and that's my version of it. And also, as I was compiling it, I decided that the foreground here was a little bit empty. Uh, so at another part of Mevagissi, I've got those boats there. So I cut those out and, and put those on to add to the foreground. Well, that just answers the question um, that someone's just commented, actually. Do you take, um, how do you prepare, um, let me just read it, how do you prepare, do you take a photo or do you sketch? So do you predominantly work from photographs of visits that you've, um, of places that you've been to? Yes. Um, simply for two, one or two reasons. Uh, number one, um, most of my paintings, as you can well imagine, if you're doing the collage and the cutting out and using these blocks and everything, they minimum probably take four or five hours. So that's a little bit uh, difficult to do, you know. And um, I bought in a little bit of the equipment, but over, uh, over in my studio, I've got mountains of stuff as well. You know, I'd, need, I'd nearly need a, a big trailer to look the stuff around uh, as well. So that sort of limits it a little bit. Um, but then also with digital photography, you know, if I go to Barmouth for the day, I might come back with a hundred photographs. I might only use two or three of them, but uh, you know, they're, uh, they're so much easier and then I've got them there in front of me and you know the the red one is Shrewsbury I mean that you know I mean I took that photograph but I've actually used two of them because I wanted the whole of the bridge in um, yeah. and then obviously you can see that I, I decided to do it in a red version you know uh, much more uh, single colours as far as that um, so the photographs give me the kick off and I'll perhaps uh, sketch out just a little bit in a, just to get an idea. But most of the ideas are in my head, and, and then I just let it build. Yeah. We've had a question come in. Um, uh, can you tell us about your Italian adventure paintings? Oh, right. Um, well, uh, at, every artist, loads of artists throughout centuries have painted Venice, haven't they? And uh, I, I always thought, mm, do I want to join them and uh, paint Venice as well? But 
it's such a lovely place that uh, about four or five years ago decided yeah we would go to Venice and of course when you get to Venice you're absolutely captivated with it and you can imagine all those old buildings the water the canals and all of that sort of thing I think I probably come back with 400 uh, photographs you know that from uh, from the visit and although I've painted some of the uh, um, most famous scenes I've painted them in what I consider my style you know as far as as far as that's concerned um so yeah it was it's such a delight for me to go and see all of that but then you know I could go to um uh Siena I think Siena's a fabulous place I mean I think you sold four doors didn't you Siena a year or two ago yeah that's that was going to be a sort of like the next question actually leading on from that because you you concentrated on um doors didn't you so an image of just a single door in on your travels in Italy what what was the um what was the inspiration behind that well I think um probably I mean you've seen from work the, the, why I use all these different tools uh, and these mediums I'm very very interested in textures and mm. uh, the uh, if you've seen, obviously, the Italian architecture and certainly uh, the doorways in Siena, I mean, they haven't been painted in 100 years, you know, so you've got all that lovely textures and uh, all the lovely, uh, you know, paint flaking off and that sort of thing. And the stonework is, uh, you know, falling apart of bits and pieces, but it, it looks fantastic. And so to um, uh, try and capture those, it works particularly well with the medium that I use, you know, as far as mm. that's concerned. Um, uh, so that's why um, I painted those doorways. But if I can make a sufficient interest in a painting uh, with those, and they give, you've got the raw material to start off with. I mean, I think, there's a, I think you could probably go to Shrewsbury and find a number of the old uh, buildings with doorways in that, uh, you know, equally as interesting. But we paint ours a lot more often, don't we, than what they do in, in Italy. Yeah, very much so. I think there was a, a like a trend a few years ago, wasn't there, for sort of going to, around to European cities and taking photographs of um, sort of Italian doorways or um, door handles and, and different things because each one is so so different from from the other. Yeah, but your style yeah. does complement those pictures. Yeah, um, because like you said, all of the texture. I, um, think that, um, I, I like. I tend to feel as well that. Um, I, I like paintings to have a, just a little bit of a story or, you know, you could perhaps think of yourself fitting into it. Uh, um, and, and so those doorways, you know, you sort of think, well, what's behind that doorway? Imagine who, who lives there and that sort of thing as well. Like, you know, um, I, 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 and that's why I try to make my, all my paintings uh, are interesting in that respect and that's why I find it more difficult probably to paint just green fields and hills and that sort of thing you know yeah. I, I feel as I need something more into it to give it uh, that story yeah we've had um, another question come in where in the world would you most like to visit and paint well if you look at my work the majority of it you'll see is within the British Isles. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, we have traveled the world a fair bit, you know, we've been in China, we've been in the US a couple of times, uh, we've been in Africa and all those sort of places. I mean, they're all fabulous places as far as that's concerned. Um, but um, I, I, I'm just so at home with, in Conway, in Conway Castle, or uh, up in Scotland, you know, we've been in the Outer Hebrides and that sort of thing. I mean, you know, the boats and that are, are predominant in my work, but uh, mm. I'm just equally comfortable painting Shrewsbury as well, the, the, uh, with all the, uh, the different bits and pieces of Shrewsbury. Yeah, the different architecture. Yeah. There's a, there's a comment on that question that we've just had in, actually, where would you most like to visit and paint? Because I don't know whether I've ever mentioned to you, Rob, we've, we've had a few um, people that have bought your paintings and have never been to that location. They've, ne they've never been to the oh, Highlands yeah. or they've never been to um, the, the harbours of Cornwall that you've painted. 
but it has made them want to go to that place. And they've actually made almost like pilgrimages to, to those oh. locations because they own one of your pictures on their wall and now they can say that they've been to it. So it's oh. kind of like a bit reverse of, um, of that question that came in. Oh, no, not... actually, that, that's really nice. Now, perhaps I ought to broaden my horizons then. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps I ought to paint some ex ex exotic locations as well then. <laughs> but I think, I, I think with, um, especially during lockdown as well, uh, well, not the lockdown, but sort of maybe the next 12 months, um, these staycations are going to be yeah. uh, the, the, our holidays, aren't they? Yeah, um, so many beautiful places within within England and, and Wales and Scotland that there's so much to see. And I think that's what your work is when, when you come into the gallery and see um, sort of a painting from Shrewsbury, a painting from Mevergissey or, like I said, Barmouth. There's there's so much variety um, yeah. in the land that you, that you paint. Yeah. What's the, what would you say would be your your most favourite, what, what subjects do you enjoy the most painting? Um, well, I suppose, you know, this one I've shown you of Mevergissey in the boat. We went to Mevergissey probably four or five years ago and I painted, uh, oh, I don't know, probably seven or eight paintings, I think. Um, and and um, Obviously, I've not been able to get out and collect any more material for the last six months or so. You know, I'm dying to get off to Wales and <laughs> whatever or out and about. Um, so I have actually, you know, said I've probably got uh, two or three hundred uh, photographs of Mevergissey. And so uh, a fortnight ago, so ago, I got them out and looked through them again. and thought, yeah, OK, this is the one I'm going to spark that one up, you know. Um, because it, it's it sort of interests me. So I do like returning to the boats and the water and particularly the old boats and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that does. But then, you know, like the, you know, this time last year, we went on a Thames cruise and I come back with uh, uh, quite a lot of images and uh, thought, yeah, OK, I like the idea of the water again, the Thames. I love the idea of... Um, uh, the historical buildings and the, the contrast with the new ones. So, you know, that obviously is different, but it, from an artistic point of view, and from my point of view, it was sufficient to give me the inspiration. So, yeah, okay, I can see, I can see something coming out of that. And uh, uh, hence, um, you know, I painted it. And as I said, that one on the wall there behind me, you can see is HMS Belfast uh, with uh, uh, the t Tower Bridge uh, behind it. And so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, um, uh, yeah, I'm open really to, um, uh, it, it's just what takes you uh, the inspiration. I mean, I consider myself as probably an impressionist, you know, I'm, I'm not into photo reality or anything like that. It's, um, uh, it's my impression of it. And you can imagine painting with these tools and collaging and that sort of thing. It is going to be an impression. Mm. But it definitely, your work definitely gives off that um, that feel, that atmosphere, the impression of being there. Um, yeah. And I think that's what's quite incredible, really, because when you've got bits of card and paper and um, sort of applied paint rather than brushed on, it really does give a huge atmosphere to yeah. the picture. So and along with um, paintings of harbours and um, we've got the, the London scenes here, um, you, you do a lot of lighthouses as well, don't you? Um, but also you, you do a fair bit of commission work. Mm -hmm. So people really enjoy your style. And can I say the amount of homes that I've been in um, around Shrewsbury and Shropshire when I'm delivering pictures, the amount of people that have pictures on their walls by you. <laughs> You're a very popular artist here. <laughs> um, yeah, so the commission side of it, um, uh, what kind of commissions have you done um, and have there been any favourites? Um, I wouldn't say any favourites. Um, what, what, uh, 
uh, with commissions, what I've always been fortunate uh, uh, with, um, people, first of all, see my work and know the style. Um, so they know that, know that what I paint. Um, and therefore, very fortunately for me, they come along and they ask me to paint something that they know is, is within my, shall we say, capabilities or my realm or sphere of work, or, for instance. I mean, I'm very fortunate. Nobody comes along and says, look, this is our pet dog. Could you have <laughs> a go at uh, doing a portrait of our pet dog? Because I, I would have to refuse, you know, because it... Well, it just wouldn't interest me full stop, and I would sort of feel mm, I'm not going to make a very good job of it as far as as far as that's concerned. So, fortunately, I don't get uh, commissions like that. Um, I've just been working on uh, a couple of commissions uh, in in the last uh, few weeks. Um, uh, a friend of mine asked for a painting of Newlands in. Uh, Newlyn in Cornwall, the harbour there, because she knew I painted. Um, now, I've not been to Newlyn, and it's a long way to go, and, and even if you could at the moment, uh, to collect images. Um, so occasionally I have used, uh, Google have loads of fantastic images of these places, um, and so uh, I was able to download a number of images that I thought, yeah, okay, I can see these, but if I work on them a bit there, a bit whatever, I can... Um, uh, I, I can get a, a decent painting out of it. So uh, that I've done uh, once or twice. And uh, a year or two ago, somebody asked me to, to paint the, somewhere in Mallorca, I think it was. I haven't been to Mallorca as such, but they bought along their own photographs and said, look, what can you do with these? Um, uh, and I got something uh, out of it uh, uh, from there. So how did you find that painting of, of Mallorca? Because the light in in Mallorca is so different to the light here. I suppose it's the same as um, your trip to Venice as well, yeah. because the light in Venice is completely different to um, the light in England. Yeah. Well, it also, um, although I have the photographs, you, you know, as I said, the English bridge. Um, I mean, I did one that was, the colours were more or less um, as they were with my interpretations. Uh, but then the other week, I, I thought, yeah, I, I really like the idea of that again. Um, and I thought, I'm going to have a go at sort of more monocolour. Hence, uh, I mean, as you can see, I used to see on that, the background is red. It, you know, it's painted on a uh, red mount board. Um, and, and I uh, thought, well because all of my work tends to be very colourful, I would try and keep it much more unified. I mean, I know it is bright and everything, but um, it, 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 for me, you know, it's a bit more fun to paint because, um, you know, it, it, I had the stimulation of trying to predict. I mean, you know, you know very well all those houses and that on the, and the buildings, the hospital and that, the old ho hospital and that bright red, but... Mm. Um, uh, hopefully for the composition it works and certainly for me it was uh, sufficient um, stimulation and inspirational you know to have a go and I do dip, uh, 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 drop into that I mean th this other one uh, that I showed you at the harbour I mean I purposely kept all the background dark you know on that one very much black you know for uh, uh, really dark but then yeah. obviously the boats and the bits and pieces they had to be uh, more colourful but it allows them to stand out. Um, yeah. And that was a challenge, you know, and the fun of painting it. Yeah. Recently, you said that you've, um, although you kind of worked from the back uh, of the pictures and, and, and come to the, to the front, but you, recently you've really been sort of experimenting with much more texture, haven't you? By yeah. almost using three-dimensional objects in there. I think this one here, if I switch... Oh yeah. Um, this one shows it off quite well. Um, and if I go at an angle, you'll see, hang on, here we go. So you've actually used card in this one, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, quite thick card, yeah. Um, and in, there we go. You can see, if I get it at the right angle, yeah. almost peeling off as well. <laughs> yes, I noticed that when, when I brought it in. <laughs> But it gives, um, 
it gives a lot of depth to it. I mean, these steps coming up from the from the water as well. That's another piece of card. Um, but on the front of it, you can really see that those steps are three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. What's this, Rob? Perfect espresso, cappuccino, or latte. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a bit of collage. That was cut out of a magazine or something. <laughs> I'm not sure it was uh, that particular one, but it, it was an interesting one that I thought would uh, add a bit of interest in the painting. And actually, I'm seeing um, th this is the fun with with Rob's paintings because you look overall, it's just it's a nice, lovely image. But then when you look that little bit deeper, can I see a Cadbury's sweet wrapper? You thing? can indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Just after Christmas. <laughs> Plenty of those available. <laughs> yeah, and I, why, why your pictures are so interesting to look at. Well, that's why I put the crossword puzzles in, because um, I, I, I've been once or twice in uh, exhibitions and... Uh, uh, you, you know, you do a fly on the wall sort of thing, or you you wander around and listen to people uh, make comments without them knowing you or whatever. And, uh, you, you know, they, they said, oh, look, that's a bit of crossword there, or that's a bit of foil paper. And I think it's nice that, um, you, you know, best paintings or best pictures can be viewed at, from different distances, can't they? You know, you can be right up close, as you've just done with mine. Uh, and it at a distance, and it still has that amount of interest, which obviously is is the best. And mm. it was last year I started experimenting with thicker card too, and I thought it will create those shadows and that that you've sort of shown there. Uh, yeah. But then also, I think it was perhaps the result of lockdown. We've done we've done such a lot of ordering online, so we've got loads <laughs> of boxes uh, lying around. So I got loads of cardboard to uh, to use. So. Um, the, That's the, good. That I've been recycled. Yeah, recycling the um, uh, the packaging in your pictures. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so, as as an artist, Rob, um, you obviously enjoy art and other forms of of art. What kind of artists do you enjoy looking at the most? Um. I, I think my favourite is very much uh, the Impressionists, particularly the French Impressionists. You know, we went to I, I, uh, we went to Paris a number of years ago, and I had a good look around all the uh, the galleries there. Very much, and, and I sort of feel my style goes towards that. But you know, I like Turner as well. You know, I mean, he's a lot of his work is very Impressionist as far as as far as that's concerned. Um, so yeah, I would sort of bundle it into that. Um, and contemporary ones, you know, I mentioned uh, Mike Bernard, I like his work, and Moira Huntley, who's a, a pastelist and watercolorist and, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, um, I, I like a wide range of, uh, of work, but those I would say is the, the ones that inspire me uh, more than anything. Yeah. And, and kind of combining um, your previous career as, as a teacher or headmaster, and now as an artist, you, you now um, have done quite a lot of art workshops, haven't you? Yeah, it, um, uh, yeah, a, a number of years ago, uh, art society, I went to art societies and people asked me if I'd come and do, a dem do demonstrations, particularly with my work being slightly different. Um, and, and of course, that was virtually impossible because of the length of time that my work takes, you know, and, and if you're gluing collage on, you have to let it set and dry and that sort of thing. So I said I couldn't do that. But what I did do, I started uh, photographing some of my work from start to finish, which I then have put into various PowerPoints. So I can go along. I've been along to oh, loads of uh, art societies or groups or whatever. And uh, I do the PowerPoint uh, presentation and they see the work from uh, the blank piece of uh, mount board right to the, uh, to the finished product as far as that's concerned. And I just sort of talk it through as far as that's concerned. And then 
uh, very often or loads of times they then ask me if I'll come back and do a workshop, a day's workshop. Um, because it, it's nice for artists as well. You know, if you're a very precise watercolorist, the first thing I stick in their hand is one of these rollers, you know, one of these wallpaper seam rollers and say, there you are. I, I take along uh, sheets of mount boards so they've got something uh, a size to work on. In fact, I, looking at the names going through, I can see one or two people that have been to a workshop so they can vouch for this. Uh, the first thing, I, yeah, so that you you don't have any inhibitions, you know, you've got a roller in your hand or you're sticking collage on to start off with. Um, and, and so drawing is not uh, an essential part um, uh, to start off with. And then, you know, just as I let them build, they can let them build as well. So uh, actually, I've just seen here as well, Jonathan, we've got uh, Lara in. I, I've just completed, uh, I'll, I'll tell Lara and uh, Tifo, I have just completed, I think I've emailed you, uh, your um, your commission. Uh, they've uh, they commissioned a, a a hotel in South Africa and uh, Ross has just, I'm collecting it tomorrow, Ross has just framed it and uh, Lara and Tebow, I tell you, it looks fantastic, it looks great on your lounge wall. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. <laughs> I suppose when, when you're doing those workshops then, then Rob, um, it's, it's almost kind of, it's taking you out of the normal as people would expect to in, in an art class it is to, to use a paintbrush and learn how to draw. Yeah. And it is, it's going back to just being creative, just playing as well. And, and just having a, maybe a little bit of fun with it. Oh, absolutely. Well, th there's nothing more fun for an artist as well to be in amongst a lot of people that yeah. uh, you've sort of set them up and they're sort of painting away. Um, and you're sort of guiding them and they sort of scratching the head and so, oh, what can I do now? You know, and you sort of uh, put a little bit into it. Um, uh, and it, actually, the um, I have exhibited down at the summer exhibition at uh, Church Stretton a few times. And I think a couple of years ago, um, I was guest art at a workshop down there. And uh, uh, when I went round the exhibition, there was at least five of uh, the paintings on the exhibit that I could see that I'd had a hand in. I'd actually put some work into them. I could see that, uh, uh, you know, they weren't mine, that they were people that attended one of my workshops. And I sort of said, oh, a bit of this or there will do, a bit of that will do. But, you know, as you said, that's all the fun. And, uh, you know, mm. it, it is nice now how you're influencing other artists and um, on, on their style. Nice to see that. Well, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> a little bit maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's fun to do anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, um, Rob. I think we've kind of come to the end. Um, well, you so notice I, just... I talk a lot about my work. So I, I know <laughs> you're used to it anyway, Jonathan. So I bet you, um, <laughs> you guarantee that. And we just had a comment from Jenny saying, "Loved your workshops." By oh, Jenny. oh yeah, Jenny. Yeah, she did. She did some nice paintings. Yeah, she did indeed. She sent us a card as well. She had something done into cards. Fantastic. So thank you very much, Rob. And just for everyone watching, um, this is the, the third um, sort of instalment. We do have um, previous ones um, by Jacob Chandler. Um, we've also had a chat with Ian Ray Smith. Um, and going forward, next week we'll be we'll be talking to um, Chitra Merchant, who is a screen print artist, um, a specialist um, down in Bristol. So we'll be having a chat with with her. So um, if you want to carry on um, sort of watching, then tune in next week, um, and then fairly soon we'll be adding all these um, talks and conversations um, on the website. So um, you can sort of log in and, and have a look on previous ones there. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, Rob, and thanks, well, everyone. Happy, yeah, and uh, can I just publicly thank Jonathan, yeah, for organising this tonight and uh, been a great patron of my work as well and giving me the opportunity to, to branch out like this. I'm very, very grateful for all that, that he does and, and everything as far as that's concerned and making all this possible. And also, I'll, I'll, I'll do a big thanks to Ross as well, because I can see he's in the chat room somewhere or other. 
Uh, Ross, a fantastic framer. He, he makes my work look extremely professional and uh, adds pounds to the value of them. But thank you very much, Jonathan, yeah, for organising this. Absolutely great. And keep up the good work. Thanks, Ron. Thank you very much. And if, um, if anyone wants any, um, any more information about Rob's paintings, then um, send us uh, an email or you can DM us on, um, on Instagram. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Rob. And I'll um, okay. speak to everyone soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.